Hey y'all, let's look at these percent word. Oh, how does that word keep getting sneaking in there? Let's just get rid of that thing. Okay, puzzles. Okay, I admit and I understand that percent stuff gives some people like the fan tods, gives them the willies. Okay, so you know you don't have to be the smartest person in the world. You don't have to be a genius at math or whatever, but. Percents, fractions, decibels, man, those are, you gotta know how to do that kind of stuff. And uh, I mean, I've, I've been in rooms before when I was an adult and a kid, and somebody asks a question that needs to be answered about percents and, and decimals, and everybody's like, uh, you know, like if it was a, if it was like an emergency, we'd all been dead by now. But I mean, you wanna be, have a method, and again, well, I'll give you the method, and write this method down, make sure you're doing your notebook with those little you know, the little uh, 68 on the top, and so you know where to go to look for these things. So let's just go back and do an oldie here. Write this as an equation. 3 eighths of a number is 36. Can you visualize that? 36 is 3 eighths of a number. So 36 is the number. It's only 3 eighths of some bigger number, right? So it's gonna be a, a bigger number than 36. So 3 eighths, 3 eighths of, multiply a number, n or x, whatever, is, 36, then you multiply both by you know the reciprocal, and you got the number. In this case, it's uh, 96, okay? Let's do something slightly different, but the same concept. We're doing the same thing. We're trying to make sentences into equations. That is our job. You got it? Because you, you, you know how to solve equations of all kinds with fractions in them and, and you know, 3x minus 1 half equals 9 tenths, and you, you, you can do all that kind of stuff. All you need to do I know it's a little daunting sometimes, and it is, it's challenging. All you need to do is change these sentences into um, algebraic equations, okay? And this is slightly new. It'll be a little bit challenging at first, but you'll go get to it and see examples done, then it'll start coming to you, and then you might just dislike it at first, but within a matter of weeks or months, you'll really hate it, okay? All right, let's try something. Sales tax is 7% in North Carolina. John bought shoes for $62. How much sales tax did he pay? Now, let's treat this as if we are being forced to come up with an equation, okay? Well, the question you're asking, forget the equation. What, what's the question you had to ask? What's really, when it says, how much sales tax did he pay? Let's put the numbers in there and find out what are we actually asking? We're actually asking, the question is, what is 7% of $62, right? That's what we're asking. The question we're saying is what? That says what? What is 7% of 62? That's the question, right? So let's just, you can either write that down if you want, or you can in your head go, okay, what is 7% of 62? Oh, wait, what? What? Okay, is, is 7% 0 0.07 or 7 hundredths, whatever you want to write, of multiply 62, okay, I got it, I got it, okay. Now, just go over here and do the arithmetic. Just go over here and go, oh, okay, 62 times seven, that's gonna be two, four, four, uh, I got it, okay, wait, 0 0.07, 22, okay, four point, there it is, I got it, $4.44, and actually that's 4.34. Okay, there we go, you got it. Now you know how much the whole pair of shoes cost with tax, right, okay. The baby weighed 75 pounds at birth, this is, it's one of those homeschool babies, you know. The parent, the dad's like, hey, look, honey, you have 19 kids already. We can't really afford any um, until next year. So you're gonna have to hold it in for six extra months, okay? Or maybe a couple of years. It's gonna come out, it's in the fourth grade already. So, okay, all right. The baby weighed 75 pounds at birth. A week later, he weighed 90 pounds, gluten-free cheese. What percent increase was this? Okay, and again, let's figure out what we're asking here. This is the hard part. What This next part is the hard part. What percent increase? Oh, okay, the question is, well, how much did the baby gain? 15 pounds, right? So what you're, you're going, okay, he gained 15 pounds. So 15 is what percent of 75? What percent increase? Because 15 compared to what he usually was, what, what percent is that? Oh, okay, but just do it out and go, okay, 15 is what? percent of 75. 
That's the question. And I admit, I understand it's, that part is not easy. Okay, but once you keep going at it, it'll you know you'll get more right than you get wrong for a while. Then all of a sudden, after a while, you'll be like, I got this, no big deal. Okay, so let's turn this into an equation. Uh, real quick question first: How do you write ninety-three percent as a fraction? Ninety-three over hundred, right? How do you write seventy-one uh, percent as a fraction? Seventy-one over hundred, right? Okay. How do you write what percent as a fraction? X over 100, right? That's how you're going to do this. Anytime it says what percent, you go X over 100. That's how you write what percent. So let's do it together. Okay, 15, looks like is is. Okay, 15 is what percent? Remember we said X over 100. Of, multiply, 75. You can put 75 over 1 if you want to. There we go. Okay, so let's actually just, let's just go 15 is equal to, and 75 times X is 75 x and then 100 over you know, times 1 is 100. Now you can write this like this if you want. You can just kind of write the x out kind of like to the side, you know, like it's one of those normal equations we have. So just remember that for next time. And I, ugh, I hate, you know, I hate the, the way this is. Um, I'm going to go left to right. Okay, here we go. Now what I would do if I were you, I mean, you know what to do now, right? What, do you, what fraction do you multiply both sides by? 100 over 75, right? But I sure as heck wouldn't, look, wouldn't do that. I mean, look at that. Let's, let's knock that fraction down. You know 25 goes into both of those, right? So 75, it goes 3. And then 100, it's, you know, 4. So 3 fourths X is 15. Now it's a lot easier than multiplying by 100 over 75. Good grief. Okay. So multiply by 4 over 3. Well, we know that, right? 15 over 1, 4 over 3. That's gone. And then, you know, 15 over 3, that's going to be 5. So 5 times 4 is 20. So the answer is this baby raised on gluten-free cheese and held in for two years, 20% increase. 15 is 20% of 75. There you go. That's all there is to it. The hardest part of this is that first part of going, yeah, what's the equation? Uh, you know, don't worry about it. I mean, yeah, just don't quit. Don't quit trying. Just keep trying, all right? It'll, and look in the back of your book, oh, okay, yeah, that, that's what I, I should have guessed that or whatever. So keep at it. You'll get it one of these days. Okay, less than 100, let's do this. Let, you draw me a diagram that says 30% of 140 is 42. Go ahead and pause it and draw something real quick. Not perfect. Okay, I mean, you know, I don't know. There's 140, right? And I don't know, is that 30%? It's more like 28.6%. 30%, let's say that's what it is. Okay, and we'll go, that part right there is 42. Yeah, you know, good enough. Okay, that's all you need to do, all right? But you could actually go like this. If you wanted to If you wanted to say this in, a, in an equation, you would go 30%, 0.3, or, you know, 3 tenths, or 30 over 100, whatever, of 140 times 140 is equals 42, 42. There you go, it works, it'll work out, so, okay. You tell me, and they're going to give you these in your book to help you find these percents. Complete this by finding A and B, okay? Well, they'll, they'll say, you know, 100% before, and then after there was certain was, you know, some percent, and then there was an amount that was 70%, okay? Well, first off, if you got a whole hunk of stuff that's 100%, this hunk down here is 70%, what's this hunk going to be here? What percent is that? 30%, right? Okay. Yoink. Okay. Now, if this is 180, this chunk right there, what's this going to be? How are you going to figure it out? It's just 600 minus 180, right? Yoink. Here we go. Just a visual thing. Okay. I don't have anything for you to sniff for you nasal learners, but anyway. Okay. All right. Let's look at something. Evan bought a red and green kilt for $433.65. It was 30% off the original price. What was the original price? And why on earth would anybody wear a kilt? This science has no answer for. Okay? None. This other part we can try to figure out. Okay. So he buys this kilt for $433.65. It's 30% off the original price. So you tell me, what percent is this dude paying? He's paying 70%, right? And he, in other words, if you were to visualize this thing like this, this dude's paying, you know, $433.65. 
and this is 70%, right? That's what he's paying. This other 30% here, I mean, he's not paying that. That's, that was, it was a discount, okay? Christmas is over. So what was the original price? This is, okay, think about this for a second. Go ahead and pause it for a second and see if you can come up with a sentence that asks the right question. Just pause it, take 30 seconds and don't quit. All right, pause it. Okay. You're gonna go $433.65. It's 70% of something, I don't know what it is. So what you could write is you could go, okay, 433.65 is 70% of what? That's the sentence you're gonna ask. There you go. That's all there is to it, okay? Let's turn that into an equation. Okay, let's try it. So 433.65 is 70%, let's just do 7 tenths, of, multiply, what? X. Oops, I forgot I was supposed to do an equal sign there. Okay, so let's put this in the natural order. Is 433.65. And since you've got a decimal, I would probably go ahead and just go, yeah, I'm going to make this into a 0.7. Right? So you're going to divide both sides by 0.7. Right? There you go. So you would go, okay, 0.7. Let's do the arithmetic. 0 0.7. 433. 0 0.65. Ooh, I'm going to move this over to make it a whole 7. And then I'll make this right there. And there's my decimal. 7 into 43 is 6. And there's 1 left over. Six and the, 7 and 13 is 1. And there's 6 left over. 7 into 66 is 9, and there's 3 left over. 7 into 35 is 5. There we go. That was the original price right there. Okay. By the way, if you do the visualizing part, like this drawing over here, you can do your fraction equals fraction method. That'll work perfectly too. All these, these percent things, the fraction equals fraction works every time. So you can do it that way if you want. If you did it that way, this is what you'd be looking at. Okay. You'd be looking at this picture going, okay, 433.65 and 70%. And, oh man, and that's some big number. I don't know what the whole thing is, but 70%, uh, I know that's going to be, you know, 7 tenths. That's my fraction there. Okay, now I got 433.65, and that's only a part of a bigger number. Wait a minute, the bigger number is on the bottom. I'm looking for the bigger number. That goes on the bottom too. So 433. 365 and then I cross multiply 7 times x and then I got you know 433 times you know times 10 you move over the decimal one time 4336.5 and lo and behold look at this 4336.5 divided by 7 does that look vaguely familiar there it is same old thing so either one of those always is fine okay all right try page 217 and let's come together in a second and we'll do those so Pause it and give it a whirl. Okay, we can just fill in this blank. This is a pretty piece of cake here. If this is 60%, that's 40% that you're you know, missing. The B is going to be 700 minus 280. That's going to be 420. Boom. All right. Next one. 40% of all the icons in Hanover attended the reunion. If 160 attended, how many icons are in Hanover? Okay, well, again, you can... Do the picture. I would absolutely do this picture. Here are the, here's all the icons in Hanover, right? 40% of them attended. So let's do a little thing. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's your 40%. 40% uh, attended. And, oh, that's 160. So we go, okay, well, that then, that's 160. And the question is, how much is this whole honking thing here right there? I don't know. But we know that 160 is 40% of something. It's bigger, we know that. So if you get in your head, just start going, okay, well, you know, 160 is 40% of something. 160 is 40%. 160 is 40% of something. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 160 is 40% of something multiplied by something. That's it. That's my equation. There it is. And that is it. You're, you're right. That's it. So let's knock this thing over one time um, to go... Move it over, and then we can move this over as well. In other words, we're multiplying by 10. 
So four times something is 1,600. You know what that is. Four into 16. Yoink. There we go. And again, you could go, you know, if you, if you wanted to do your fraction equals fraction method, what the heck, go ahead and do it, you know? There it is. So we got 40%, fine, 40%, 4 over 10. You could reduce it to two-fifths if you want to. Okay, well, I got 160 as my other number, and I got something as my other number. And they're going, wait a minute, okay, I'm looking for 40% uh, of my 10, how many, are, oh, I'm looking for a number that's bigger than 160. Okay, so wait a minute, I'm on, on, oh, so the number here that's bigger is on the bottom. Oh, it better be on, okay, so I'm looking for that number. There you go, there's my 160. Ah, I got my setup. Cross multiply, four times X, four X. 160 times 10, let's see, 16 times one is 16, then one, two zeros, you, you, and gee, look at there. Same old thing right there. You got, okay. That's it. All right. Let's try uh, one more. Pause it. Okay. Owen placed 700 ice cubes in his cooler. Who the heck counts that kind of stuff? Some like, you know, OCD homeschooler probably. All right. If 280 of the ice cubes melted, what percent did not melt? All right. So you're sitting there. 700 ice cubes, 280 of them melted. What percent didn't melt? Well, first off, how many of them didn't melt? What's the number? It's 420, right? You're gonna go 700 minus 280, 420. Boom, that's how many, that's how many didn't melt. Okay, now let's, let's think about it. This is the hard part. Okay, 420 didn't melt. What percent didn't melt? Well, what, I mean, what percent of 700 is 420? 420 is what percent of 700? I don't know, 420 is what percent of 700? 420 is what percent of 700? 420 is what percent of... 420 is what percent of 700? That's my question. I got it. Okay, let's write this thing. 420 is equals what percent x over 100 of 700 times 700? Okay. So let me do the multiplication here. 420 equals 700 on top, 100 on the bottom, times x. Wait a minute, I don't want all those zeros. Let's just do, oh wait, that's a seven. Oh, wait a minute. 420 equals seven times x. I divide by seven. Wait a minute, 42 divided by seven is six. Six, oh, that's it, 60%. 60% didn't melt, you got it, there it is. Okay, also, if you don't like that way and you want the fraction equals fraction, well, what the heck? Go ahead and do it. All right, there we go. Look, um, I got numbers. Let's make up. If you want to do the drawing, you can. 420, and the whole thing is 700. And, you know, what percent is that? A percent right there? I don't know. Let's see. If I write 71%, that's 71 over 100. If I write 93%, that's 93 over 100. If I write what percent, that's X over 100. Oh, I got it. Okay, there it is. Okay, now let's see. Is that more than 100 or less than 100? Well, 420 is not 100%, so that's going to be less than 100. So I got two other numbers here. There's one. There's the other one. That's gonna, I'm looking for a smaller number than that. So that means the smaller number also matches that it goes on top and... Look, there we go. Cross multiply. 700 times x equals 420 times 100. 42 times 1 is 42. 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. Oh, look. I'm hacking out two zeros here. Hacking out two zeros there. That means 7x is equal to 420. 4, Gee, where have I seen this before? 7x equals 420. That sounds familiar. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. It's all wasted. Okay. All right. I know that was kind of a long one, but hang with these percent things. Man, this is, Saxon's method is tops. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, just learn that method. Man, this will knock stuff out for you for several years. Listen, when you're doing calculus in three or four years or whatever, and the other kids are struggling with, uh, how do I do percents again? You know, you'll be going, I'm learning calculus, not percents anymore. I'm done with that years ago. So do it. See you guys tomorrow. Take care.